So hi, uh, my name is Maria and um, I am an interaction designer and my talk is called Design and Developer Collaboration Best Practices. So I have a quick agenda for you guys. We have just like 25 minutes to go through the whole thing. So I'll, I'll touch a little bit on the graphic design and then on UI UX design, mention some lean and agile uh, practices, processes that we have, processes we want, some tools that designers work with, like I mentioned, I'm a designer and I'm here at a, basically a developer conference. So I will want to give you some insight on how designers work, how it's uh, done with distributed teams, different size projects, and maybe also mention briefly some open source design practices and communities. So why am I doing this talk? Basically, uh, as far as I can remember, as long as I've been working with open source, with Fedora and Red Hat, there's always been some issue collaborating with developers, first of all, because developers have different processes. Uh, oftentimes the teams are set up so they are agile, so they're working in sprints and developers have their own tasks and they have their own statuses for these tasks and they do not always match whatever designers are doing. And also I've been a long time contributor for Fedora and as you know, Fedora is in uh, many ways working distributed all over the world. So the people who contribute to Fedora can live in Australia, in the US, anywhere, Europe, India, you name it. And it's also always been a challenge collaborating online. And now in COVID times, obviously many teams are online and it poses much more challenges that way on how to, for everybody to collaborate, even if, you know, developers and designers work in different ways, now there's an added challenge of doing it remotely. And from my point of view, better understanding between the two, I don't want to call them teams, but the two different professions would lead to better collaboration and greater results to be out for you, for yourself, and for your users in the end. Okay, so <clears throat> hopefully you will get some insight into designer work, what's UI UX, graphic design, and what I mentioned already, tools, process, and tasks. Okay, so let me talk a little bit more about who I am. So at the moment, I'm working as an interaction designer. I've been a tracker for six and a half years, and I'm mostly focused on uh, products that are working inside of Red Hat, so some internal tools. But also I've been a long time contributor to Fedora and I started as a Fedora uh, design intern. So working on a Fedora design team for I think seven years now. And uh, I will start at that because I started as a graphic designer then slowly transitioning to be a user experience designer or an interaction designer, if you will. So I will start a little bit about talking a little bit about the graphic design process. Uh, so in Fedora design team, we use a ticketing system and it's on Beggar and we have a specific place set up for it. So it's Beggar design issues and the issues come in here. So if you want to request anything from Fedora design team, so something Fedora related, maybe you want a logo, maybe you want some swag, maybe you want a banner, um, anything that's, you know, graphic that would go in there. So the ticket comes in, it's triage. So somebody looks at it, it's assigned to a designer, designer works on that issue. So they create some design for you. Then uh, there's some feedback from other designers. We do hold design meetings, I think once every two weeks at this moment. And then uh, we also like to get some feedback from the requester, obviously, because if you requested the design, you know what you need we would like to hear from you once the design is created because normally the designer when they work they do not just create this one design well i shouldn't say normally but sometimes they would create one design that they think you requested one design maybe that they like maybe something else comes to their mind they want to you know as a professional to offer that to you and we would like to hear from you to basically to get some feedback then based on the feedback they would iterate and once the design is approved, you're done. So graphic design process is pretty uh, linear. So you get a ticket, you work on it, you finish and you're done because you get something tangible in the end. You get a logo, 
uh, you get an icon or a set of icons, you get a wallpaper for that matter, like a Fedora wallpaper, for example, is something we work on. Once it's done, it's, it's you know, done. All right, so the tools that we use, and on the left here, I mentioned the tools that Fedora uses for their designs. And on the right, I also mentioned some paid tools if we are not talking specifically about open source projects, but rather any sort of graphic design. Uh, here, I want to point out specifically uh, Pagger that we use for ticketing, Inkscape. That's a great vector tool to work with vector images and vector graphics. Uh, if you're editing some photos, you would want to use GIMP. If you're working on something more complicated, maybe some interface or website, you, would, you could possibly use PanPod, and that's something that we started to use recently. And the all the uh, talking right now, chatting happens on Matrix or Element, and we also use mailing lists, and at some points, GitHub is used to store some graphic work. Okay, so some of the challenges that are here that we face working with developers is sometimes people ask us for the wrong thing. So something that's not in the capacity of the design team for that matter, maybe it should go to marketing or some, some other field or sometimes incomplete information in the ticket. Because for example, if you're requesting a logo, you cannot just say, okay, I need a lot of logo for my you know, team or my project we would want to know something else like who you are, what your project does, do you have any idea what it should look like, maybe. You also would be welcome to leave a lot of feedback because it sometimes happens that the designer would create something and then the original requester would never come back to the ticket and they would not leave anything, what they like, what they don't like or anything like that. Sometimes they do leave feedback, but it can be off-putting, so be mindful about what you write. Some of the contributors can be very new. Uh, a lot of people like to try out their design skills in, in the design team, so you should more, be more guiding, not off-putting when you're writing something in the ticket. So you should be mindful that those people are volunteer workers, that they could maybe you would not be able to handle all of your requests or maybe they don't, you know, they only do it in their free time. And so they won't have, they won't able to be, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> they won't be able to do it very quickly. Anyway, some of the advice, just generally working with a global team of designers and ticketing system is to have well-defined, well-documented tasks and maybe some, you know, resources available, but that's mostly for us, not for the developers. Uh, for the developers that would be, you know, know how to submit your requests. Um, and here I'm saying developers, I generally think everybody uh, who needs something design created, right? So be mindful of what types of tasks you're considering for the design team. Uh, think about what info we might need from you or be there to answer questions should we need more. Um, and like I mentioned, so you know, so the time frames can be longer because people are distributed. People do it in their free time. They might have their, you know, their main job, and they will just, you know, do some fedora design on after hours. And the most important part is the two-way feedback. So always remember to be there to answer questions, to provide feedback, and also. Maybe hard, but sometimes it's needful to trust the experts or trust the designers that are working on your project. Um, probably they have a good perspective on what they're doing. Okay, so going on from there, that was a little bit of an intro into Fedora Design Team. I'm gonna go on and talk a little bit about UX, so user experience design, and UI, user interaction design. Uh, so UX is more of a broad term that sort of incorporates UI in it because UX is something that we're talking about when we talk about experiences. And so if we talk about UX design, it's a lot of things in one. So it's testing, it's writing user stories, it's creating personas, doing research, writing scenarios, creating wireframes, creating prototypes. Well, UI is mostly concerned with interfaces, right? So it's mostly about how that looks, not how it feels. So all sorts of layouts, colors, typography. And it's important to remember that these two need to work together because as you can see in this picture, 
somebody designed this road to go this way, right? So somebody designed this park, I think. But then the user experience is completely different. So they didn't, you know, look at, uh, at the user behavior prior to designing this. And this is, a, in my head, the main difference and something you need to always consider that you should design based on whatever people tell you. Anyway, there's a quick representation of what I was talking about. So this is UX and this is UI right here. Okay, um, going on to the whole collaboration, I'm still leading into that. Um, I want to touch briefly on how UI and UX design is different from graphic design process. So as you saw, the graphic design is very linear. So you get a task, you work on it as a designer, and then it's done and you, you are done. The main thing here is that you're never really done. And then you should also collaborate throughout the process, not as a request comes in, you do it and you ship it off. Uh, no, ideally a good UI UX designer, depending on what they do, will be involved from the start. So they will be involved in the strategy, in the research, they're working with developers from the very start, working with product owners, with QA, with everybody. And they should be sure they're solving the right problem. So the user has also to be involved from the very start. And the good UX designer would advocate for the needs of the user from the very start. Some of the tools that I used here, and I want to mention the tools because it's very important that not only designers try and understand how developers in the end put their designs into life. Uh, so it's good for a designer, for example, to know some code, to know maybe some HTML, basic CSS, at least when they are working at their mockups to ensure that they can be done or at least work with the developer from the very start to, to you know, ensure that the mockups are feasible, that they would not have to change their design drastically or that they've not designed something totally crazy that cannot be done in the end and have to redesign it. Uh, okay, so the tools are, so some designers start with pen and paper, some can use a graphic tablet to draw their stuff. Very basic at first. Uh, then they can use Inkscape or Sketch, which is a commercial product that you have to pay for to put the wireframes together. Um, here's an example of a very basic design. So it's very, you know, low fidelity, mid fidelity wireframe. This is more detailed wireframe. And from there, you can test already at this point with your user or at least with someone on your team, maybe one or two people, you can show them, get their feedback, see if you're going in the right direction. Um, specifically, a developer needs to be involved at this point already so they can see, okay, so this can be done, this makes sense, maybe that doesn't make sense, maybe that interaction won't work in the end, right? And then you could use other tools like um, Sketch, for example, or Tanpot, which I mentioned already, or Figma, or anything else, there is a lot of them to put your detailed prototypes together. And the important part here is that they would be interactive. So you can assign specific parts of your prototype to be clickable, like this button. If you click this button, it does this. Because oftentimes you cannot just hand over a finished design like you could in graphic design. So, okay, here's the picture and you're done. Uh, no, you have to design the whole experience throughout. So when the user does this, this happens. This, this screen appears. When the user does this, that screen appears. That kind of thing. Um, some of the challenges here are pretty much the same as we mentioned before, but also sometimes when there's no clear understanding of what the goals are or who the user is, or if there's no clear direction, then the team can steer off in a little bit of a you know, wrong path and start designing that way. So you need to always check back. Are you solving the right problem? Get to the bottom of it, get get to the to your user, ask them, is this right? Is this right for you? Um, again, I here I mentioned insufficient feedback. So a design does not happen in a vacuum. You always need someone to bounce your ideas off of to make uh, to, to make sure it makes sense. Maybe if you're designing an interface, somebody has uh, some example that you could use. Maybe they have a better idea than you that you could put together. And that's totally fine. Uh, one of the most important things is the designer handoff. And 
Specifically, I want to mention this because uh, sometimes it so happens that the person designs something, they would design an interface, they would give it to the developer and think, okay, that's it. But ideally, no, because when the developer starts putting it together, many things can happen. Uh, they can put it together a bit differently. Maybe they don't understand what the interaction is. It's not easy to document interactions and it's not easy in the distributed team for that matter to explain something. I always say that it's easier to show once than, you know, to explain in, in, in two pages of text how the design works. So you would want to, you know, design something and then you work with the developer, show them, explain to them. Hopefully, if you can talk to them, if you can video chat them, at least to do that. And also, uh, it can be difficult because people speak different languages. So uh, designers have their own jargon, developers have their own jargon, and uh, it can be challenging to understand each other. So some of the solutions are listed here. Uh, also, I want to mention uh, this third bullet here, maintain contact with team members throughout. Um, and that means that with the distributed team, we don't often see each other, maybe in some team meetings or maybe not even ever. And it's hard to understand how the person you're working with likes to work. How do they like to um, get the work to them? For example, some people would like it if you would talk to them a lot, if you would call them from time to time, or maybe if you would, other people would like it if they, you write them messages or if you email them, uh, everybody's very different. Everybody's processes are different. Some people would like to check in with you all the time. Some people would ever do that. And one more advice would be to just maybe set up a video call if possible with your team member who you're working with. And I, I don't know how many developers are in the audience or if there are any designers or maybe some other specialists. Uh, so I, I, I would like to know that at some point, but yeah, it's very important to just check in with the person, maybe nothing even work related, maybe just set up a video call and chat about life. So you get to know this person better because everybody works differently and to maintain this kind of human contact is very important. Um, another thing I want to mention is the design systems. And there was a talk earlier today about design system, which I thought was great. And I want to, I want to mention two more. I want to mention pattern fly that is used wise, widely um, for products. And also I want to mention yaks.radhat.com. So it's just a, a site that contains a, a lot of components that can be used and reused in different interfaces, which might be helpful because sometimes for developer, if they get a picture, um, they need to know how what, what's the size of the elements is basically, what's the color because the designers can put a lot of thought into that, but it's not easy to read from the picture. And so just to think this through how you want to hand off the designs, how the person who would put them together, who maybe a front end developer, how they would work with it. Some of the tools that I mentioned online, they offer an option to inspect the designs. So you could see what the size of the element is and how you could put it in the code. Or maybe you could directly copy code from there and, and that's much easier for everybody. I want to also mention briefly here the open design framework. Um, um, I don't know if this link works, but anyway, so that's something that the whole team agrees on. So that's the tools, that's the processes, that's how design tickets are incorporated into developer tickets and their processes. And also how <clears throat> maybe the personas are set up for your process. Let me speed up a little bit because I don't have much time left. All right, and so I also wanted to mention all lean UX, which is a sort of, a, it's a process that's been uh, incorporated a couple of years back. And so that allows you to focus on the outcome. So not to build a whole product from start to end with a lot of bells and whistles and features, but rather build something that's an MVP. So the minimum viable product, it's a core concept of lean UX. So you build something that's it wants functional, reliable, usable, introduce maybe some emotional design, it's focused on your user, it's tested throughout, but it works and, and maybe it's minimal, but that can be built upon rather than it's just functional and does that. Okay, so what else can be done? Um, you also 
can hold design thinking workshops. And here I'm going to do a quick plug-in. Tomorrow, uh, Marie Norden and I are holding a design thinking workshop in the afternoon, and you're welcome to come. We're going to do some uh, design thinking exercises, and don't be put off by the word design. It's more of a way of thinking, not of designing stuff. Uh, one more thing is design reviews. It's something I like to do on the teams that I work on. So I would invite everybody who's in, on the team and who can come so we can look at designs, we can talk together, we can see if we agree on what needs to happen um, and just you know agree on further steps. And uh, all, always people have a lot of great ideas that we could incorporate in the designs later. Uh, here I wanted to mention that there are a lot of processes um, that exist like design thinking, lean, agile, anything. And unfortunately, it's impossible to solve the whole design developer collaboration problem with a process. It really, really depends on how the team is set up, on how the developers work, and maybe it can be different for every single process. And let me just get briefly to here, a project, right? Because different projects are different sized, and so they have um, different stages. Something may be shorter, something may be longer, but you know you have to be mindful of that. Um, and as a designer working with a developer, you have to be mindful of that too. Let me go back one second. I also want to mention briefly as a closing, maybe almost note, the 10 usability heuristics. Um, I will, so my slides are posted on uh, shed.org so you can download them or is it on Hopin? I don't know. So I will be sharing my slides after the talk and I want everybody to be mindful of these heuristics. They are very useful. I, I have them printed out, so I think about them all the time. And I think for developers too, it's, it should be very useful to think about this too, just to, you know, to keep your user in mind, to keep their um, behavior in mind and to help them out when you're building something. Um, also, these are some process diagrams uh, that exist. And this is ideally what would happen when you're working on a project, but it's not always what would happen. And here you could see um, what and maybe even who is involved at each stage. And ideally all the team or developers and designers for that matter would be involved from start to end. So they talk together constantly so they can reiterate, so they understand, so they're on the same page and they talk to each other not forgetting about the user. Okay, so I guess with this I'll close and we'll have a short Q&A. Maybe you could give me some advice on how to work with developers better because I would love to see who's in the audience today. And if you have any questions, and let me stop sharing my screen. Okay. Oh, thanks, Maria. Awesome. Uh, sure. Unfortunately, I don't think we have enough time for Q&A. We're kind oh, of at the okay. end here. so. If, uh, if they want to reach out to you with the questions, I'm going to copy the questions from the Q&A, but if anyone wants to reach out to you, how can they contact you? How can they contact me? Um, let's see. Well, I'll be here, I mean, at, at DEF CON in the event, so maybe they could message me in chat. Um, right on. And and you did say there's a workshop coming up where you're going to be there too. Yes, so. yes it's going to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's right. Well, thanks a lot, Maria. That was a sure. great presentation.